Hi, my name is Anya and uh, you're very welcome to the Applying to for UCD Scholarships with Access and Lifelong Learning. I'm joined today by my colleagues Enya Murray, who uh, works as an outreach officer, as do I, and with Pat, from Patrick, with, joined by Patrick Clark as well from UCD Foundation, who's going to tell us a bit about their role. Um, if you have any questions um, as we go along, feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer your questions at the end. So, um, in general, the scholarships that we're going to talk about today are the 1916 Bursary and the Coram Nefaina Undergraduate Scholarships. And um, so the 1916 Bursary is, it would be worth €5,000 per year of study and there are eight bursaries available. This bursary is funded by the Department of Education and Skills and the Coram Nefaina Undergraduate Scholarships are worth uh, €1,500 per year of study and we awarded 100 in 2019-2020, so last year. Um, and we're not sure how many we can award this year, but there are more of those available than there are at the 1916 bursary. And they're funded by donors through UCD Foundation. So um, Patrick is going to tell us a little bit about that. Oh. Hi everyone. I just wanted to begin by congratulating everyone here for all their hard work over the past few years and for getting a place here at UCD. So I work with UCD Foundation and we are the charitable arm of UCD. We provide funding for various projects across the university from medical research and new buildings to mental health supports and student scholarships. And one of my main objectives is the funding for the Comer and Fena scholarships, which are awarded to scholars such as yourself who have demonstrated a clear drive to pursue higher education despite the educational challenges they may have faced. And while also demonstrating leadership to others, others who may have experienced similar challenges in pursuing third level education. In the first year we awarded these scholarships and um, we awarded around 13 students and um, thanks to hundreds of UCD graduates coming together with a shared vision of making UCD education accessible to all. But this year, thanks to over 4,000 UCD graduates raising over 3 million, we're aiming to offer over 100 scholarships this year. And um, for those that apply and are successful in obtaining a scholarship, I just really want to urge you to get us involved in all the different programs run by the Access and Lifelong Learning Centre and make the most of your university experience. You will, be able to, you will become an important ambassador for UCD and your local community and prove to all those who follow you that a third level education is open to anyone that is willing to work for it. At the end of the academic year, you'll be asked to fill out a survey that will be shared with the person who funded your scholarship. This is your opportunity to demonstrate to them the impact receiving a scholarship has had on you and your university experience how it has impacted your home life and the ability to dedicate more time studying and getting involved within the university. And the students who came before you in previous years have really gotten involved in this process and by doing so have demonstrated the impact a donor support has had on them. This in turn inspired these donors to continue and increase their support and um, which has allowed us to grow our scholarship provision year on year. The more detail you put into it and share with the donor, the more likely they will be to continue to support the next group of students coming after you. After all your hard work in getting here, I really hope you enjoy your time at UCD and go on to do great things, no matter what career path you choose. Um, I'm just gonna hand you back there, Sonia, thanks. Brilliant, thanks Patrick. Um, yeah, we're so grateful for the work that Patrick and all of his colleagues do in the foundation and, um, and for all of the donors, because it wouldn't be possible to have the scholarships without them. So we're very, very grateful. Thank you. No worries, well. Um, so, to be eligible for the Coram Nefaina Undergraduate Scholarships, we'll talk about the Coram Nefaina Undergraduate Scholarships um, in the whole complete application and then we'll move on to the 1916 bursary. So to be, um, to be eligible, you have to be from a low income household and um, so that's below €45,790 and we look for the financial income for 2019 for this year. And um, the students who are given priority are here eligible students, DARE eligible students, students with a disability, first time mature students, members of the traveling community, further education award holders, lone parents who are in receipt of a means tested social welfare payment, students who are from ethnic minorities, refugees, those with leave to remain status and asylum seekers and students who have successfully completed a UCD access program. Um, so additionally, there are scholarships for um, students who have new full-time undergraduate UCD students who have attended St. Raphael's, Saint Raphael's Secondary School and Temple Oak College um, who are studying a full-time undergraduate course. And um, then there are, there's another uh, Coram Nefaina stream, I suppose, of scholarships for students who have graduated from Dominican College, McCris Park, Donnybrook. 
um, and those students have to be willing to act as a role model for future students and um, that they're willing to complete a scholarship recipient feedback form at the end of each year and um, similar to, to what Patrick mentioned there for the donors. So uh, Nafena applicants will be assessed on confirming that their household income is less than 45,790 euro in 2019 and um, they'll give information on the challenges that they've faced in accessing higher education, the achievements and responsibilities that they might hold in community organisations, charity organisations, sports or other interests that they have. Um, they must explain their rationale for seeking a scholarship, the motivation that they have for studying a higher education and their career plans and the financial needs as well. So the application forms are all available on our website. So um, if you go on to ucd.ie forward slash ALL at the top, you'll see come to UCD and financial support and this will bring you to this scholarship page and um, where all of the scholarships are listed. So it's the Cormen Avena undergraduate is separate to the Mucrus Park Bogato scholarships and the St. Raphael's and Temple Oak and 1916 bursary is also separate. Once you click into them on our website and see the one that you want to apply for, and it might be more than might be more than one, it might be the 1916 bursary and one of the other government of famous scholarships, um, it will bring you to this page on SysWeb and you can um, click into it, into the one that you're applying to at that time to complete your application. So the questions for the Corman Afena undergraduate scholarships, all three of them that I mentioned, including the school, um, the school scholarships, um, will have these questions. So the first question is, you confirming that you're from a low income household that's below 45,790 euro. Please choose a student type that best describes you will um, lead to a drop down box where you can indicate that you're an undergraduate student or an undergraduate student who graduated from, um, from Mucrest Park or um, whichever one that, that is the one for you. And through which admissions path pathway did you enter UCD? So there it might be here, there, mature, or there, you'll, you'll find the one that suits you. And then under the candidate, then section A is the candidate statement, and these will be the long answers. So you have a, a 500, um, 500 words as a maximum word count here, um, where you can include information about the candidate statement, so the reason why you're seeking the scholarship, the achievements and responsibilities, your achievements and responsibilities, so anything that you're proud of, you need to tell us there, or anything that you're involved in, um, your barriers to, edu barriers to accessing higher education, and your course choice and future plans. So why you chose the course that you did and what you hope to do in the future after you graduate or maybe while you're still studying in UCD. You need to include your CAO number or your UCD student number, which um, you might have noticed are the same now at this point. Or, um, and then uh, if you're already in receipt of another scholarship, provide, it there, provide information about it there. So not just a UCD scholarship, any scholarship at all um, that you're in receipt of. So to help you to answer the questions um, that are listed there, we have a video guide um, that is 12 minutes long um, and our lovely colleague Lisa uh, recorded it. So that's on our website as well on the, on the main scholarship page. Really worth watching, uh, worthwhile watching. Um, and these are the top tips. There's lots of, lots of really useful information. So definitely recommend watching it. But the top tips when you're filling out the form is to take time to consider the questions before you complete the application. So if you can look back at this or look at um, the application form before you fill out the, the questions and just begin to write um, on a Word document or anything else and just write lots and lots and lots and then edit it down so that it's what you want to, to um, submit. Be aware of the maximum word count and give us as much information as possible to assess your application. So sometimes, like if you only write one or two lines, you're very unlikely to get a scholarship. But if you, if you try... You have to think that this is our only chance to get to know you and you have to we can only make an assessment on your application based on the information that you provide so it's important that you include as much information as you can and uh, be very proud of yourself and tell us everything that you can so that we can really get to know you as a person while we're reading your application one or two lines isn't enough to tell us about yourself and um, if the questions have multiple parts, for example, achievements and responsibilities, make sure that you address all parts of the question. So to include achievements and responsibilities that you hold, you can combine them together if you like, but make sure that both parts of it are addressed, that it's not just achievements, for example, that you're, that you're telling us about. And as I mentioned, it really is your chance to tell us about yourself. So it's really, really important that you take time to consider it and talk to friends and family about things that they that they would include about you that maybe you don't you haven't realized about yourself yet and just to make sure that you really give as much information as you can 
The second part of the Cormann Fáinne undergraduate scholarship application is the application checklist. So you need to include um, support in documentation um, and that will be an income, an income declaration form. So I can show you what that looks like in just a second. Um, no, let me show you now, why not? <laughs> so the income declaration form. Um, I meant to keep sharing, sorry. And just stop presenting, sorry about that. So the income declaration form that we want to see is this one. So where you, this is available on our website, we have a link to it um, on the page, on the scholarship page. So you will need to include the, um, and all the income that full, for a full picture of income for your family for 2019. And um, so from January, from the 1st of January till, till the 31st of December. So whether if it's your mother or your guardian, their information here, father or guardian information here, and if it's you, your information there, all for 2019. Um, so income from um, from work you've done, income from as an employee, in from, income from work as being self-employed, and income from um, the Department of Social Protection, um, any scholarship income that you got from something else, and any other income that you'll put here. Um, and you need to save that and upload that to your application form as well. Other um, documents which you might need is if you are in receipt of Susie, so if Susie have confirmed that you're eligible, then you can just submit the letter and that's it. So you'll you'll do the income, if you're eligible for Susie, it's the Susie letter confirming you're eligible plus the income declaration form. Or if you are eligible for here, for the higher education access route, you can include the letter confirming your eligibility for here plus the income declaration form. Um, or if you're not eligible for Susie or here and you're including financial information, then you'll need to include either a P21 or statement of liability for 2019, if you're self-employed or your parents or guardians are self-employed, a notice of assessment chapter four document and or a statement, of a statement from the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection of the payments that you got. So an example of a P21 is here. It's changed a bit over the last year, so it's now a statement of liability. So it might look a little bit different, but that's absolutely fine. It's something that will show um, all of the information for income received and it's very important it's a two-page document and it's very important that we get two pages because a lot of the information that we need is included on the second page and um, if you're if you or your parents were self-employed and you're including information there then it will be a document that looks like this so a chapter four notice of assessment document and um, if you are also providing um, information, a statement from the Department of Social Protection about the payments that you received, then you can request that through um, mywelfare.ie. So you can, uh, if you have a good idea or, or you can get one to request the payment statement and submit that information as well, um, along with the income declaration form. And I'll hand Thank over you. to any of them. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Okie dokie, so I'm going to just take you through the 1916 bursary. As Anya said, the answers can be the same for both applications. So a lot of the information that I'm about to give you on previously as well. Um, so if, yeah, we'll go through it and we'll see how we get on. <laughs> okay, so since 2017, we've been really lucky to have awarded 45 UCD students the 1916 bursary. And um, so this year we anticipate to have another eight students awarded again this year. So that's brilliant news. Um, the, as Annie mentioned as well, the 1916 bursary, it's 5,000 euro per year of study as well. So it's a tiny bit more than, my, than the Carmen Lafayne bursary. So it's just that, that bit extra. Their eligibility will differ then um, from the 1916 and from the Carmen Lafayne. And the most different is the income threshold. So the income threshold for the 1916 bursary is actually 24,500, and that was in 2019. So you can be, so you just need to show proof that you're eligible for the special rate of the SUSE grant. Um, and then if you're in receipt of, an, of a payment from the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection as well, we'll ask for proof of that. Okay, okay, Annie. okay so yet again, it's quite similar with the criteria for Carmen Afeni, but we'll go through it again. And um, so it's socioeconomic groups that have low participation in higher education. So they're either eligible for the highest level of SUSE or an error in receipt of the social welfare payment as we mentioned. You can be a first time mature student, um, students with a disability, particularly students who have physical or mobility impairment or students with a sensory disability, 
students who are deaf or hard of hearing, students who are blind or visually impaired. You can be an Irish traveller. You could be entering on the basis of a further education award. Lone parents, and we'll just need proof of the payment which, that, which has the, the lone parent um, payment on it. So we'll just need documentation for that. A student from an ethnic minority or a refugee. So that's our eligibility there. So if you fall into any of those categories, you're A1 hunky dory to apply for the scholarship. Our applications are assessed similarly to Cara Mnafaina as well. So it's all, it's all based around statements and supporting documentation. So we'll need proof that your household income is less than 24,500 in 2019. You'll have to write the statement again then about the challenges faced in accessing higher, higher education. The purpose of the 1916 bursary is to encourage students who come from um, communities with low participation rates. So it's really to, to encourage that kind of student as well. So it's just you have to show the barrier um, that you face. Your achievements in community, charity, sport or other interests. So things that you're proud of. Um, roles that show that you have a leadership role um, would be perfect. So you just have to, have to show that in the statement as well. Um, your rationale for seeking the scholarship. So really the reason as to why you think you'd be a good candidate for the 1916 bursary and the reason as to why you're making the application. Your motivation to study at higher education. So you might tell us a bit about why you chose the course, why you, why you chose to study in UCD and your future aspirations as well. Your career plan would fall into that, so how you're going to use your degree to excel yourself into the, into the world of work. And then your financial need. Yet again, similar with, um, the, with the Car Carmen if you go onto our website and you just click uh, application button, it'll bring you to this web page. You then just have to click the 1916 bursary. We just have had a query earlier on today where a person clicked um, to make an application and they were told that they had already opened an application. If you go into your SIS web profile, you'll be able to see my applications that are open. So if you click my applications in SIS web, you'll see that you have your active um, scholarship, you have your active applications open and you can just click to edit. For our general questions, I have to make two apologies. <laughs> so we had a few IT gremlins over the summer and we couldn't, we couldn't get them fixed in time um, for the launch of this scholarship. So my first apology is I confirmed that I am from a low income household below 45,790. That's incorrect for 1916, as I mentioned, the income threshold was 24,500. So for that one there, you're confirming that your income is within the 1916 limit. And then again, we have, you'll notice there that we have achievements and responsibilities in twice. So I have section B, achievements and responsibilities, and I have the second question is achievements and responsibilities. This can be a copy and paste. You can either decide to copy and paste the answers and into both sections, or else you can say, I've answered this in section B. So. Hands up, that was our fault. <laughs> and yet again, it's the same thing as Anya mentioned. For the different sections, you have about uh, 500, 500, word, 500 word word count. <laughs> um, and in the candidate statement, we just want to know more about you. We want to know what's brought you to this degree, why you want to go into the degree, any barriers that you faced. Um, we just want to know more about you and just make sure that you're the kind of, you're the role model that we would have as our scholarship holders. For our achievements and responsibilities, tell us about things that you're proud of and tell us about um, roles that you've had a good positive contribution. So it might be like, even if you're just coming from secondary school, you might have been a prefect or you might have held a senior role in that, or you work for a voluntary organization, you uh, contribute some of your time. It could even be that you train um, young people in sports. So it's anything really that kind of shows that you give back to your community. That's what we want to know all about. Your barriers to education, will be the barriers that you'll know your barriers yourself so it's just how you articulate it so how you write it down can be a challenge sometimes and myself and I only talk about this all the time because we can't like I think that we all find it really hard to sell ourselves <laughs> so for the whole thing it might be handy even if you had somebody close to you who you could ask to read over your application and um, and they could even say do you know what you you're pretty good at this side of things and you haven't mentioned it as well so put, pop that in it's always good to have a fresh pair of eyes and to make sure as well that you're not duplicating your information on the different sections, that you're making the most of the work out. Your uh, course choice and future plans. This is probably my favourite part um, to read because it's so interesting to figure like to, for us to know why you picked the course or why you picked UCD and what your plans are for the future. It's just, it's a really heartwarming section as well. So that's probably my favourite. <laughs> and then your add your, your UCD CA owner. So they're the same things as well that I mentioned, just the little details. 
The second part then of this application is our Google form. So this is just to capture a bit more information about you. And it's just that we decided to make it more um, <laughs> confusing by having two separate things. <laughs> but this one really is that we would like your name. And um, we'd like to know what, what, um, what background that you come from. So where, where your eligibility criteria is. So you can just either select one or you can select more than one. And um, if you have more than one, it won't, that's no problem as well. So just tick them away. And then we want to know about your community reference. So this again is somebody who can, uh, who can vouch for you to say that you contribute your time um, to the community. So as we mentioned as well, in your achievements and responsibilities. So it could be a letter from your school, it could be a letter from um, a place where you volunteer, where you work, and really they'll just say, yep, yeah, this person is a good role model and they do contribute their time. So that's just a, a verification on it. And that's on our, it's, it's a link on our website as well. So just please, if you can't find the link, just email either me and Anya, but it is there. So there shouldn't be any problem at all. And then same again with Carmen and Fena. So it'll probably be that you're duplicating your, your uploads. And um, so the income declaration form looks the same as um, the one that Anya showed you, but it is different. Thanks, Anya. And that's on our 1916 webpage as well, our 1916 birth webpage. So it's the same information if your mother, father, guardian um, had an income in income coming into the household in 2019, it's just that you stipulate where the income was. So if it was income from wages, if it was income from self-employment, if it was income from the Department of Social Protection, so if it was a means tested payment. We'd like the full amount of the means tested payment in the column that's relevant to that person and then the documentation that might be required for it. So this is just a kind of an overview for us of all the documentation that you submitted. So it's, it helps us with kind, of, with kind of a checklist. And then if you've entered through the HERE pathway, as Anya mentioned, you can use a letter um, to state that. If you, need, if you need access to a letter, if you are a bit confused about what to submit, just send us an email as well, that'll be no problem. And your Susie letter as well. Um, Anya, I don't think you did, there was a question in the box and it was that the course was different on your Susie letter because you received it um, prior to the accepting of the course. That's no problem. We just want to show that you have the Susie eligibility. So don't worry about um, if the course is different on the letter, just pop in the letter. That'll be no problem whatsoever. And then your financial information. So as Anya mentioned, the P P21 or the statement of liability, it's all, it can all be requested from revenue. Um, our hope for our requests with financials is that you probably have needed them already this year for your Susie application or for your HERE application. So we do hope that they are close to hand. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's very important to submit your documentation. Otherwise, we can't proceed with the application. So don't fall at that hurdle. Okie dokie. And then the reference as well. So that's just to say it. You pop in your Susie letter, pop in your HERE letter. <laughs> and that's it. Um, just share the screen again just so you can see our contact details and so you know to contact us if you have any questions and um, so there we are so you can contact the office the all general email account so all at ucd.ie and um, or ours our email addresses are onya.murphy at ucd.ie or anya.murray at ucd.ie and um, and yeah so you feel free to message us at any time and then um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can after that and that's it thank you for joining us and good luck with your application <laughs>